Let's say our books of the New Testament together. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 2 Timothy, Philemon, Oh, you got Philemon. James, James. I think we should do that every Wednesday. Revelation 2. That's maybe maybe would be good for us. Did you guys find Colossians in there? Colossians? You know why it's called Colossians? It's because there's a letter written to the church of Colossae. The Colossian people. Now, I'm glad I'm an American, but Colossians are a pretty good sounding name. Sounds like food, sort of. A little bit. But uh, Colossian. Colossian. You know... Sort of like casserole, but not. <coughs> so, what we have for dinner, we're going to have a Colossian uh, something. Anyway. I want to read, I want to read um, <coughs> verses 5 and 1, 5, 6, and uh, down to... Uh, we'll read verse um, 17. Ready? 17 is our, our text this evening, but I just want to kind of pick some verses to give us our context. What chapter? Chapter 4. Still chapter 4. All right. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Uh, verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Verse 17. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. That's our text this evening, and so I'll read it again, and then we'll pray for the Lord's help with our understanding. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Now, Father, I pray that you would help us to be able to just take this nugget, which is included not only as a personal letter, but which is included in a letter to everyone, help us to learn by the example of what was said here to this man, Archippus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this evening I think I'll have an opposite problem from what I had Sunday evening. I'm going to have a hard time not mixing Aristarchus up with Archippus on the opposite. So if I say Aristarchus this evening, that's let's just say that that means Archippus, okay? Let's call those, I know they're not synonyms, I know they're not the same people, same names, but let's just settle that before I do it, just so everybody knows. It's not that I think that they're one and the same, it's just that I don't think much, and that's the problem. Okay, now, uh, I, I uh, have been in the last several opportunities that I've had to preach, especially because my preaching is being broken up uh, by uh, interludes. Like, for instance, Brother Washer preached two Wednesdays ago, Brother Taj preached last Wednesday, and so the week before that, I was preaching uh, just a couple of messages on the topic of prayer. And uh, Sunday evenings have been much the same. This, this uh, coming Sunday, I'll preach all day, and then Brother Duke will be preaching the uh, next Sunday all day. And so it makes it a little tough if you're in a series. And so I've kind of, in the summer months this year, you may have noticed, been kind of going back to some places where we've been and preaching some things that I haven't preached as I preached through books and letters of the Bible. Colossians would have been one we would have formerly been in, I guess, a year and a half ago. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it's, it's been a little while back. But I, sometimes when I preach through books of the Bible, I want to preach the doctrinal content. I want to preach the theme that the book is covering. And it, it, there just isn't enough time to get sidetracked on the different directions and avenues you can go, the one-off kind of messages that don't necessarily carry with them the doctrine of the letter. And this is the conclusion to this letter. And really, uh, Paul spends a couple of, uh, really spends chapter 4 uh, finalizing just uh, 
topics, things for the church at Colossae to mind or to do. He said, hey, servants, give, masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master which is in heaven. In other words, you better watch how you treat people because you've got a master too, and he's watching you. You ever see somebody who's under you mistreat someone under them? What do you do if you're over someone and they mistreat someone under them? Well, one of the best things to do is just to reward their behavior. Say, well, this is how you treat the people under you, so you're going to be treated the way that you treat folks. And you want God to bless you. You want God to be good to you. He is your master. He's your heavenly father. And so you better treat the people that are your equals as far as God is concerned. You better treat the people under you uh, just and equal. Treat them right. Treat them fair. Treat them like they're equals because that's the way God sees them. And so you be mindful about that. And then there's just a lot of uh, greetings and say hello to this person and tell this person this and that. Uh, but here we have Paul telling the church to specifically give a message to Archippus. Tell Archippus. Now, we saw him, didn't we, Sunday night when we were looking at Alexander, Alexander the coppersmith, and kind of doing a little character study on Alexander, we uh, heard Archippus actually mention in that instance, he's only mentioned twice in the scripture, and there uh, would be the other place where he would actually be referenced in, in the Acts. But Paul has something specifically to say. Okay, so he is concluding his letter, and in verse 16 he said, and when this epistle is read among you. So he said, when, when this letter is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. Okay? So he wrote a letter evidently to the church at Laodicea, which was not inspired as Scripture. He wrote this letter, which was inspired as, as Scripture, and he said, so I want you to read this letter in Laodicea, and I want the letter to Laodicea to be written, to, or to be read, with the letter which was written to Laodicea to be read for you as well. And so evidently there are things that were very helpful there. You ever been mentioned in a letter? You ever been mentioned? Sometimes Paul mentions people, and I think they think probably they wish they'd been left out. <laughs> Alexander the coppersmith hath done me much evil. Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. He's mentioned here, actually, in, in this part of the letter. But there's sort of an inner circle of fellow laborers, individuals that have been part of the ministry and are part of the that are known specifically by Paul. And it's kind of neat, isn't it, when you feel like you're known by the person who writes the letter, or like you're, you know, you're part of the, you know, part of the body, part of the fellowship. This is a great thing to have camaraderie and to feel like you belong. And uh, our fellow Archippus gets mentioned here. Now we know Archippus uh, would have been part of Paul's team and would have actually traveled with Paul, so it certainly would have been known by Paul, and they would have shared in the ministry together. So here's what he is reminded about when you read the letter. Say to Archippus, Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. That's interesting, isn't it? In other words, be careful that you do your job. Make sure, tell Archippus he better do his job. Take heed to the ministry uh, which I was received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. You better do what you're supposed to do, Archippus, because God's given you something. Now, this is not a complex message this evening. Really only just uh, is information and then application. It's This is what was said to Archippus. This is what he was supposed to do. And then this is what this means for us because it was inspired. This is in the Scripture. Don't you think Paul could have just included a note to Archippus. He didn't have to put it in the letter. Could have included a note. You think Paul knew that the Holy Spirit was using him to write a letter which would be the Word of God? Yes. The apostles very well understood that they were foundational gifts to the church and they understood that they were very temporary and that the only way that the church would continue the way it was supposed to until the Lord Jesus came would be that if what they wrote was the Word of God and replace them. They understood that when they wrote these letters like Colossians, they were being replaced by the letters they wrote. We don't need Paul today because we have Colossians. 
the letter to the church of Colossae. And so taking that into consideration, it's reasonable to ask the practical question, why did this note to Archippus get included? Well, because all Scripture is given, let's say it, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay? So this is Scripture, isn't it? And therefore it's profitable for teaching. It's profitable for reproof, for reproving. It's profitable for correcting. And it's profitable for instructing us in righteousness. And oftentimes when we read a letter like Colossians, by the time we get to this final, you know, footnote where people are being addressed, we think, well, that's for Archippus, you know, we just kind of tune out and either don't read the last few words of the chapter, or we just kind of read them and the words just kind of roll off our tongue and bounce through our brain and go out somewhere. You ever just read something and you realize, I just read a lot of words and I don't know what I read? You know? And so it's just like you just check out. Your comprehension goes away and the words just go right through. And this probably, if we're honest about it, is one of those parts of Colossians, isn't it? I have been convicted by the Holy Spirit that these places are places where a person who is searching for hidden treasure needs to go digging. That there's a mine there that can be uh, dug up and you can get wisdom and you can get things that are practical for us. So why is this note left, a note to Archippus included, and said, read it in Laodicea too. Why is Archippus' note any good at Laodicea? Think it got read in Laodicea? Yes. Why? Why is it being read today? I mean, for crying out loud, we don't really know who Archippus was. We don't read, he's mentioned twice in the scripture and he's sort of, you know, the guy that got grabbed to uh, uh, be dragged in because they couldn't grab Paul. They wanted to grab Paul, but they knew Archippus was affiliated with Paul, so they dragged him in into the theater and then he escaped. That's all we know about Archippus. We don't know what he did. We don't know what his talents were or what his personalities were, except that we know that Archippus had a ministry. Archippus had a ministry. Now you know what ministry is. It's so where we get the word deacon from, diakonos. We call people ministers, but we don't really think of them as ministers. We call people ministers, but we don't think of them as ministers. A minister is a servant who performs a task for the benefit of everybody, or for the benefit of somebody. Minister is a servant who performs a task for the, minister, for the benefit of somebody. We have ministers here that, you know, if I were to go away, for instance, I would leave them notes like this. One of the ones I think of a lot uh, that I leave instructions for when I leave town a lot is Anthony. Anthony is a guy that gets a lot of instructions. Anthony, you make sure Charlie gets to church on time while I'm out of town. I'm just kidding about that. I wouldn't do that to Anthony. I do tell him that, but I don't mean it because Anthony knows nobody can make Charlie on time. But uh, uh, Anthony, make sure that the air conditioner gets turned on at teen activity so it's not hot in the morning on Sunday. Or Anthony, I'm going to leave you this key and make sure the parking lot gets blown while I'm gone. Or make sure you tell this person. Or make sure whatever. Just leave him. You know, do this. And you give him some things like make sure this gets done. Now he has things that he always does. At 5.30 on Sunday night, he's supposed to, 5.35, he's supposed to turn the auditorium lights on. Now, it's not really a big deal to turn the auditorium lights on. Anybody could do it. But if it didn't get done, you'd notice. It isn't really a big deal to take out the trash cans like Mike and Chuck do, or like Anthony sometimes does, or to blow the parking lot and vacuum up the leaves. But if it didn't get done, you'd notice it. And so those are ministries. Those are things that are done to serve people. Now, it could be something like uh, what Charlie used to do. Charlie used to pick up everybody for church on the way to church. Like, everybody called, hey, Charlie, can you pick up this person? And Charlie would ping pong all over Broward County, pretty much. Sometimes Miami-Dade County or Palm Beach County. But he'd just go pick up this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, and bring them to church. And that was a ministry. You know, get Nelson. Nelson needs to come to church. You know, get Jonathan. Get... get uh, uh, Sydney. I wish somebody gets Sydney, Jonathan, and Nelson. I miss those guys. Uh, 
Go get those guys. Bring them to church. And it's a ministry. It's serving. And it isn't for yourself that you do that. You don't get paid anything. You get to pay to do it, actually. You know, I pick you up and I get to buy you lunch for the, uh, for the privilege. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, but do it because it's a ministry. And so you can imagine, Archippus has some kind of a ministry. But there, at the beginning of the sentence, at the end of the sentence, are some very, very notable ways that things are phrased. First of all, take heed. Take heed. When Paul is on his way to Jerusalem, knowing that he's going to be bound and probably never going to be in his capacity as an apostle from there forward for the church, he knows he's not coming back. He called a meeting of all the Ephesian pastors. You remember that? And he said, Take heed to yourselves and for the, to the flock of God, for the flock of God which is among you. And so he was talking about the pastor's ministry to the people. And he said, Take heed. In other words... Be careful. Be watchful. Be mindful. Pay attention. Look out. Because this is a matter of some importance. Take heed. So here's a little blurb, a little note at the end of a letter to a church which is going to be read in another church. And the ministry, in particular, what the service was that Archippus did, and the person who Archippus actually was. Now, of course, the church of Colossae knew who Archippus was. Probably the church at Laodicea knew who Archippus was, but we don't really have a clue. And what the ministry that Archippus had actually was, we have no idea except that we know that it was important. Now, if I'm going to apply the Scripture and find doctrine, where is it? We can deduce that this is important, right? So I think that's the doctrine, that's the teaching, isn't it? It's profitable to all of us, so how is it profitable for us? Well, I'll tell you why. Because all of us have an important ministry. Each of us have an important ministry. And I think that's exactly why this is here. Because it's not only important what we do, it's important that we actually do it. That you fulfill it. Archippus' ministry is so important that we don't know what it was. And it's so important that he's warned to do it. Ministry, service for God, service to others for God's sake, is not important because people know what it is. Or because it has lasting memory or legacy. Service is important because it's unto the Lord. Of course, it's Archippus' ministry was important because God gave it to him to do. Now, I don't know if he was washing everybody's feet. You know, don't mess up the floor when everybody comes in. The Archippus, you better keep people's feet clean. It could be taking out the trash. It could be he's the guy that, you know, was sort of like a deacon in a church. When people came, he was supposed to kind of fill out what the needs were and make sure people were taken care of. Could be he was supposed to pray for people. Could be his bodyguard. I don't know what he did. You don't know either. But it was important because God wanted him to do it. What's your ministry? And who gave it to you? It was God gave you life. God gave you breath. God gave you eternal life and you're His servant and you're supposed to serve. Take heed. Better make sure you serve. Oh, pastor, you know, I don't think my ministry is that important. Who gave it to you? Who gave you the ministry? Gave you the job? Pastor, you're the one that... No. 
I didn't give you ministry. God did. And if God gave you ministry, that's your purpose. And that makes it pretty important, doesn't it? And you better fulfill it. Two final things I want to say about that. First, if God gave you ministry, God gave you a place and a task to serve, you better know what it is. You better know what it is. What's your ministry? Two, not only should you know what it is, I think it's kind of important that like spiritual gifts, it's recognized by other people. In other words, Archippus didn't have a secret ministry or he'd been sent a note. It was known to everybody there that Archippus had a ministry and that God had given it to him and that it was important that he fulfill it. And so, I don't want to oversimplify, but if you have a ministry and there isn't a person in the world that knows it, you probably don't. If you think you have a ministry and no one in the world knows that you do, you probably don't. Let's put it another way. How would you like to hire someone to work for you that you could never see that they did anything? How would you like to have someone hired to work for you that you could never see that they did anything? I just, I want to get value. I don't care if it's my money or someone else's. Don't you? You hire somebody, say, Pastor, I'm going to hire somebody to come over and work at your house. They better work at my house. If somebody's paid them, they better work. I'll see to it that they do. <laughs> Why? Well, because they're supposed to. And it bothers me when people don't do what they're supposed to. Take heed to the ministry. Take heed. Ministry was given to you by Christ Jesus. Jesus gave it to you. That you fulfill it. Do your job. Do your job. And that's inspired. What's your ministry? Are you doing it? What is your ministry? Are you doing it? Are you fulfilling it? I don't know when it was that this epiphany hit me. I've always heard it taught, for the sake of humility, I believe, especially going into the ministry, don't ever think that you're not replaceable. Have you ever heard this? Mm -hmm. Don't ever think that you're not replaceable. And it really, there's a lot of truth there, isn't there? Um, I didn't check on this in person, but I heard that the earth was rotating on its axis even before I was born. I haven't personally checked, but I heard that that was the case. It wasn't there. There are people that I know that have passed, and the earth has still continued to rotate. It's important to preach the gospel and to endure sound doctrine. Do you know that if you don't speak and preach the truth, that God will have the truth preached and spoken? In spite of you. That's true, isn't it? But some years ago, not too long ago, I mean the last decade or so, it really occurred to me that if God didn't have an intention to use me, then there's no point in my being here. In other words, God put me in this, these shoes to do the task, the ministry that He's called me to, and then if I don't do my job, the job won't be done. And I have, with my eyes, observed ministries like ours where there are a lot of undone tasks. A lot of things that could be done, a lot of things that should be done, a lot of things that go undone because the people that are supposed to do them don't. And there's a scriptural warning for that. Take heed. Watch out for the ministry. Who gave you the ministry? Not pastor. Who gave you the ministry? Not the church. Who gave you the ministry? You received it in the Lord. 
that thou fulfill it. Do your job. Do your job. What's your job? Do it. You know, there's a lot of help in that. You say, Pastor, well, that's not, that's not really thrilling. It's not really exciting. If you do it, if you do it, it'll, it'll be a little more exciting to you. And it, if you heed it, the warning, you'll really be helped because it is a warning. It's a warning that will keep us from standing before Him empty-handed. God says, I gave you a ministry. What'd you get? What'd you bring? What'd you do? Bring me what you bring me what you got from the ministry. You don't have any fruit from it because you didn't fulfill it. I think of the song, Must I Go and Empty Handed? Must I meet my Savior self? Not one. What? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty hand to go? You know, ministry involves souls, doesn't it? Somehow. Maybe you're not the one who leaves them to the Lord, but you're the person that serves them or brings them to the place where they come to the Lord. And that's the warning. Don't go empty handed. Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. And that's for you, Archippus. I just wonder, I just wonder if Archippus was slacking a little bit. I just wonder if he was just slacking off a little bit. Paul had him publicly warned to help him out a little bit. I wonder if <clears throat> there might have been a few people there. Sometimes there's the goat, the sacrificial goat, you know, the, uh, the, the scapegoat. They put their hand on the scapegoat and let him escape out into the wilderness and it was a sign of how far away the sins of the people were from God. They forgotten, they lost. Some Christians can handle rebuke and reproof better than others. I've done this before and it's, I've even gone to the person afterwards and said, you know, I, I, I addressed you in front of everybody because I knew you'd receive it better than anyone else would. I wanted to tell everybody, but some folks wouldn't take it. And so I spoke to you in front of everybody so that everybody would be warned. You ever see somebody get in trouble and you think, uh oh, hey. Well, that wasn't me. I better look out. I think that was probably the case in Colossae. I think there probably, Paul could have said it, you and you and you and you and you. But this fellow Archippus traveled with him had been in the ranks, and he knew Archippus would say, okay, yes sir, yep, got it. And it'd just be a good example all around. Because not only is it a good example to warn somebody that maybe isn't everything they should be, but it's also a good example when that person responds the right way. And Archippus, I think, was probably a, just a good example in receiving the word, the note, from Paul, which was included for our benefit. Father, thank you for what we've learned tonight. I pray that you would help us to benefit by it. Help us to be asking the question this week, what's the ministry which is in us because Christ Jesus has given it to us? Lord, am I fulfilling my ministry? Thank you for this lesson this evening. I pray that you'd help us to apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Let's have a time for a prayer request.